from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2018. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to theCUBE's coverage, day one of VMworld 2018. I'm Lisa Martin with John Shore. Hey John, good to see you. Likewise, great to be here. We are excited to welcome two guests, two new to theCUBE from Cloudinger. We have David Wegman, the EVP of Cloudinger. Hey David. Hi, hi Lisa. And we have Ken Z, sales engineer. Love the purple Cloudinger, it's one of my favorite colors. Uh. Brightening up our, our set here, so guys, um, give us a little bit of an intro for our audience. Who is Cloudinger, what do you do, and what makes your SaaS unique? Sure. Um, we are a, a SaaS-based solution for live migration and, uh, and uh, disaster recovery into the cloud. So we support any source, Windows, Linux, into any cloud. So AWS, Google, uh, that type of thing. Uh, what we've added this year that's a little bit different, we soft launched in December of last year, VMware as a target. So what that has done is that's enabled us now to not only do any, any source to the cloud, but now any source to VMware or the cloud opening up hybrid environments. And I saw on your website that you guys are the only vendor that supports migration NDR into VMware vCenter. So that gives you, clearly, a leg up. A leg up. <laughs> Ken, yeah. you might want to talk about that? Yeah, so, you know, what we added, you know, be the ability for customers, if they're in the cloud already, and they want to fail back to like a vCenter on-prem, so we have a vCenter appliance where customers will be able to leverage our technology to go back, if they're already in the cloud, or if they want to go back to the cloud. So they're pretty much, we're agnostic to go anywhere from cloud on-premise into the cloud as well. But you see the, the first use cases that in a failback scenario, I failed over and now I want to fail back to, to my own data center or maybe to a new data center. Is that the, is that the scenario you're envisioning? Yep, correct. Um, so we, we want to give the customer be able to data mobility, so where they want to take their data, wherever they want to move it. So we want to give them the options for having that ability. To... And I think, I think a, a point to make here is, is a lot of vendors will talk about the ability to, to, to replicate to a specific cloud or replicate to a specific environment. What we do is we replicate not only to VMware, but into the different cloud environments, and it's all through the same tool set and the same processes. So if you think about running a data center, or running, running an IT shop, you're able to learn one tool set that allows you to work in multiple environments and including the hybrid cloud. And that, that's, a, that's a real step up for the GSIs and, and service providers that are in that space. Uh, so David, you mentioned replicate. So replicate's a word that you could unpack and it might have a couple different meanings. I mean, maybe, uh, maybe David, can you talk a little bit about the technology of, of, of replication? Are we talking, are we snapping? Are we, you know, what, what, block, what are we doing in terms of yeah. the replication technology? Yeah, so you know, one thing that makes us differentiate, we do block level replication. So one of the, the biggest thing is the, you know, getting the data when we're doing replication. We're not taking snapshots, incremental snapshots, and then building it up. We're literally taking any changes from, you know, from a block level. So under, underlying storage, as long as it's block, we can see the changes. Um, if there's any change in the block, we'll replicate it over to the target. Nice. Say, how is this different from app-specific disaster recovery solutions? So we, we are application agnostic. So, you know, it, as long as, you know, for let's say in our hybrid cloud scenario, you know, as long as our cloud provider supports that block level, you know, supports that type of uh, an OS level, um, as I think David mentioned in the beginning, it's either Linux or Windows, you know, we can, as long as they support it, we'll be able to move it or replicate it to, to the location, yeah. I'm kind of curious, David, uh, you guys do support multiple clouds, right? And right. so, uh, are the customers that you're seeing are they, uh, are they one kind of hybrid cloud, like on-prem and one cloud, or are they more multi-cloud portfolio? Do they need to be worried about global footprint? Uh, you know, what are some of the use cases that you see in your customer base? Sure. Um, well, for, I think we'll, we'll start with cloud adoption itself, right? Cloud adoption is still awfully early, and um, we all talk about big hybrid clouds and multi-clouds, and we from cloud to cloud, not yet. That, but that's out there and people are talking about it, right? So the ability to do that is, will be important, right? The use cases we see today are ground the cloud with not as, not as many critical applications today. Well, I think we're seeing more um, 
um, semi-critical dev environments are going up. The big corporations, the big, the big enterprises, which is where we play, are testing the cloud and making sure it does what they want it to do and starting to move workloads up there. So those are the use cases we see. Um, from a DR perspective, from a migration perspective, we see gee, all kinds of stuff going up into the cloud and we, we support, we, we have customers that are doing thousands of migrations into a cloud environment um, at any one time. Uh, today. I'd love to understand some of the business outcomes, the business impacts that Cloud Endure is helping customers to achieve. So you mentioned you guys play in the big enterprise space. Um, banking, for example, can you share with us so, you know, one of your favorite success stories where customers have really been able to move their business forward by leveraging Cloud Endure's technology? Sure, there's, um, can't really mention the name, but there is a, there's a large European bank that, uh, <clears throat> that migrated thousands of servers from an on-prem data center in VMware into VMware in the cloud and into AWS. And they went in both directions, right? And we were able to support that migration through a single tool set. Why'd they do that? They wanted to cut their, their operating costs. They wanted to be able to scale up and scale down. Think of, think of banks down near the end of a month. They, the transaction volume at the end of the month is significantly higher than maybe say the middle of the month, right? So they're able to scale up and scale down and really adjust the costs associated with doing the processing that they have to do. So they saved a lot of money doing that, right? We see on average a, a 70 to 80% reduction in cost, this is what our customers tell us, in being able to move to the cloud and, and reduce costs associated with running your own data center. So it's significant. 70 to 80 is significant. Yeah. And, and are you seeing this, you mentioned big enterprise, across industries? Pretty yes. pervasively? Yes, we're, we're, we do a, a nice job in, in finance, healthcare, banking, uh, manufacturing. We see it, we're, we're in all those, those types of industries. High transaction volume, that are really going to benefit from the fact that it can scale up and scale down the cloud. All right, well, um, you're a SaaS solution. Uh, you're in the cloud as well. Uh, what does the architecture look like if I need to bring you all into my data center? Is there a, is there a control appliance? Are there agents? Are, do you, you know, what kind of things do I need to open up to let you do your work? Yeah, so that's a good question. So, you know, we, we have customers where, where they're looking at if they're going into the cloud or coming back. So we don't, we are SaaS based, so there's no virtual, so there's no physical appliances that you need to, you know, put in your data centers. Um, but if we're talking specifically for VMware, you know, obviously there's a vCenter appliance that you want to be able to help orchestrate that, right? Get the data stores or, you know, build up those, uh, the VMDKs. But if we're going to a cloud, there's really no uh, appliances that you need to actually have there. And we, with that ability, the customer is able to, you know, take that data, you know, bring it up there, and there's no additional cost involved because they need to have, or they're tied into some sort of a, of, um, like a physical appliance or something that needs to be in the cloud or virtual appliance for that, on that matter. One of the things this morning that Pat Gelsinger talked about during his keynote was superpowers which I loved that, and really being able to enable organizations to capitalize on superpowers of AI, machine learning, IOT, edge, et cetera. If Cloud Endure was to say XYZ is our superpower, what do you think it would be? Uh, I think it's the fact that we, that we can move you to the cloud um, and orchestrate it from discovery to deployment to a single tool set. So if you, if you load the product and put the agent on, on the source machine, we'll discover what's there, we'll create a blueprint to get you to the cloud, we'll replicate it to the cloud, and when you're ready, we'll spin up the machine automatically and you're there from discovery to deployment. That gets you there. And then once you're there, we'll allow you to maintain a disaster recovery scenario up in the cloud. That's different, right? And the fact that we can do it not only to one cloud, but the multiple clouds, or to VMware, again, just, just makes it that much better for us. That's great. Yeah. I'm just, I'm curious, David, a little bit of the, the DNA of Cloud Endure, right? Uh, you, uh, Israeli-based company uh, with the founders and engineering team, growing now, right? You all here in North America as well. I'm kind of curious, there's some companies, right, that start with VMware and then, you know, add Azure. Or there's some companies that you know started in AWS and then add you know a Google uh, you know Google Cloud and add some other things. I mean, what's the what's the DNA of Cloud Endure? Kind of what's the what's the the origin story and you know what what markets did, you, did they tackle first and, and now we're out here at uh, with VMware as a target and VMware Cloud and things like that. Sure, I, I think. 
think the thing that makes us a little bit different than the other, the other um, solutions you see is we were born in the cloud, right? The, the, we, weren't, we weren't adjusted or reconfigured to be in the cloud. We were born in the cloud, we live in the cloud, we get the cloud, right? So, and that, that's different than what else is out there today. Um, and then going forward, we, we take a look at what's missing in the scenario, certainly it was VMworld, right? it, VMware. How do you, how do you start to leverage the, the on-prem data center that's moving to the cloud now, right? VMware's now running on AWS. Uh, how do they get there? If you're moving just VM to VM in AWS, they have tools to do that. But if you want to go a little bit step beyond that, there aren't good tools to do that. And again, being from the cloud, it, we have that much, that, those type of underpinnings. That's what is in our DNA. Yeah, and you know, I want to add on that, it's, it's not just you know, getting your data to the cloud, it's how you're going to use the cloud to your advantage. We've seen customers where they'll leverage that, not only the, just the migration piece, but you know, if they, for example, for AWS, they want to use cloud formations, or you know, a Lambda functions, or RDS, you know, with that ability to have that data move up there, and then actually take that, you know, and adding those functionalities to help them, like from a business perspective, it's, it's a really, to me, I feel like it's a game changer compared to everybody else. Like, you know, you got it up there, what are you going to do with that data? Now you can use all those cloud functions and all the tools that's available to you. Chris, thanks so much for stopping by and sharing with us what Cloud Endure is doing and how you're working with VMware to, to provide customers with a unique opportunity to really maximize their investments. We really appreciate the time, thanks you guys. Thank you. For John Troyer, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live from VMworld 2018 day one. Stick around, be right back.